is one of my most favorite and adored games of all time. Most of the action in this game happened in the main areas. Each of them was beautiful and had a great boss. Now, this game made some great achievements for the Pikmin franchise, and the areas really made that happen. Here is my official ranking of the Pikmin 3 areas. Ghost of Formidable Oak. I actually liked how Nintendo expanded on the area and added a whole soundtrack, good array of cutscenes, and a great boss fight. Now, this place, once you first land there, you know that this is the final fight, the big battle. The scary music, weird landscape, and just the sense of fear driving you forward really pushed it along nicely. Even though there wasn't much of anything to do once you finish it, because you actually do beat the game, I actually really liked it, and the way how you have to escape the Plasma Wraith while you're trying to get Olimar out of the tree is really cool, and it really sparks adrenaline in me. I really like how it's dark and you have to use all your Pikmin to get out. Even though there are a lot of strategies to beat the Plasma Wraith, and how you can just use Rock Pikmin to easily beat the final boss, it's still really fun. And I love how they made you have to defeat his goo to try and lower him down and take his health down. So it's not just a defeat his health bar battle, it's more complex, which is just what Pikmin 3 thrived on. Now, I really liked the end of this game, it felt really complete, and I feel like I really went on a great journey, and I had some amazing moments. All in all, I really liked this area, and it was really great, but it couldn't live up to the greatness of the other areas. Garden of Hope takes what could be a boring, repetitive, and unsatisfactory area, and amplifies it to another level. It was so hard to only rank this at number 4 because it was so close to making number 3. Garden of Hope serves as a secondary tutorial, but still making the player attentive if they understand the controls already. The level design and well thought out placement of monsters, bridge pieces, and fruit really put a smile on my face while playing. I like how it starts out with common fruit like strawberries and lemons, and then moves up to dragon fruit with the boss fight. Rock Pikmin were a great addition to the Pikmin family and were really useful in my opinion. The segment where you uncover their onion is really nice. This area had so many strong points like Rock Pikmin, finding Brittany, fighting a boss, and uncovering a whole new area later on. Oh yeah, you heard me right, Garden of Hope has a second part later in the game where you find one of my favorite Pikmin, the Blue Pikmin. The second area makes good use of new materials and the Blue and Wing Pikmin. The boss is really fun and chaotic, which is just what I expected with a muddy boss battle. The only flaw I could find with the area is that it's too small. I like the whole area with the water and the nice garden feels, but I feel like it could have been a little bit bigger, which could have made so many cool new parts to the area. All in all, I think it's really great, but can't take any higher spot than number 4. Dista Tudra excelled in the atmosphere aspect. When the ship crashes and Brittany lands in the cave, and fights yellow Pikmin, the short warmth of the cave makes the player feel comfortable, but when Brandy goes outside into the powerful blizzard, it really makes you feel like you're in a desolate climate. The sound of wind and music brings the feels together. The part where you must reunite with the bridge and multitask with ALF makes good use of the features of the game. Switching Pikmin with ALF pressures the player with making smart 
and conservative choices. After some time of fighting through the snow, finding fruit, and playing with snow and ice slides, yes, there are actually two slides, you head inside the cave to find Charlie. The abundance of cave systems makes the snow not overpower the area, which I liked a lot. The trek through Charlie's trail, which you took at the prologue of the game, makes the lead up to the boss full of mystery. Now to the boss. The Vihamoth boss bat is well thought out. Even though it is easy, the boss fight is always a bit threatening. The way you have to light the light bulbs to make it vertical and being pressured to find parts to a bridge to a super light bulb makes the fight a true adventure. Seeing that the boss can turn invisible really turns up the heat. Wait, this is a snow area, right? Being rewarded with a beautiful mango, Captain Charlie, and a new objective makes me want to keep playing the game. I even have a tradition to go to Tropical Wilds a day before the boss and try and get as much fruit as I possibly can. My record is 7 or 8 I think. Comment if you can beat that. Twilight River is a fan favorite for most people. Saving the Pink Pikmin was a rewarding adventure, knowing how cute and useful they are. The pink color blends so well with the autumn-themed area. This area uses its environment well with movable sticks, lily pads for transportation, and moving boxes to get higher. Some of the enemies, like the Puffy Blowhog, bring back good memories of past games. Starting a story arc here for Louie feels just right, and the war between the Pink Pikmin and Scordits adds to the excitement. The beautiful scenery and just breathtaking music is just what Twilight River needed. Mini bosses like the Snagret feel perfect in this area. Even though the level felt a bit linear with trying to get bridge parts to fight the boss, it felt a bit open world too, where it shows you the objective but lets you still explore. The boss fight is just a masterpiece. The harp strings on its mouth, an army of Scornets, make the Scornet Maestro a formidable boss. Its variety of attacks and a cool reward make it a must have in the game. The fruit in this area are really cool too. bias here because I am a sucker for tropical levels in games. Tropical Wilds has a short tutorial with Alf at the beginning, which was fun, but what really stood out to me was that you could go back there later and explore more stuff added to it. Tropical Wilds has the perfect mix between sand and vegetation. The beautiful water and scenery bring it above games in 2019. The smart level design and satisfying fruit stand out to me. Collecting tropical fruits was a joy, and the enemies are really interesting. The level has a bunch of secret passageways and a nice open area to explore. Of course, 50% of my time there was digging up a banana that I felt like was buried in the center of the earth. Otherwise, I felt like every part had some type of interesting puzzle. Maybe it is weight distribution, trying to get bridge pieces from the other side, making good use of captains. Everything felt right where it needed to be. Every time I play again, I feel like I have some new type of adventure. The long legs mini boss was chaotic just like I expected. And the boss fight was excellent. The size and open area work together. I love how it burrows underground and makes huge holes in the sand. Getting it to the surface was crazy, and when you beat it, the reward is satisfying. The huge watermelon makes my mouth water, and dragging it back to the drink and the onion is just huge. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, I had a lot of fun making it, and I also am feeling a lot better. Hope you're having a good day. Potato Sensei out.